Please welcome Hugo and Ross. Good evening. Thank you very much for the introduction. Perfect. We're on. <laughs> so, 20 seconds is going. So, a lot of us ask the question, how, um, how hard was it to be an adventurer or an explorer 100 years ago? And I'm sure you've asked that a lot of times when you look at Shackleton, etc., etc. Um, so, this got us thinking. We're genetically identical. We can directly compare with no bias. What... <laughs> Um, the difference was between the two kits. So I wore Shackleton's kit across the green and ice cap in 2014. Um, I was wearing woolly pulleys, natural fibers, ple tweed plus tens, leather boots, wooden skis, this lovely polk in the bottom right-hand corner, and the differences were incredible. The old was so much better. This wooden polk here had really big skids on, but it was 120 kilos. Yet when I used to pull it along, it used to walk beside me where the modern polk just used to dig into the ice and it used to crack and crumble and they used to roll. It was really, really interesting. The first time we got up onto the ice cap um, and just learning about all the different kit we were wearing. Um, this is the picture of a Borgstrand. Um, this is basically the first crack in the ice shelf. So this all goes into the sea. And on the left-hand side, this is the first part of the glacier. We walked straight over the top of this without even knowing it and looked back straight away. So you might laugh, but the old kit really is fantastic. On the left here, I was wearing a woolly pulley. Had a couple of jumpers underneath it. The air got through the cable net jumper and wicked my sweat away. And it's a really funny thing on the ice cap. It is actually really hot. We had 38 degrees in the tent, minus 40 outside. Hugo in the middle here. The fur isn't a fashion icon. It creates a little microclimate for you to stop the frost from um, going onto your eyelid. As you can see on the left there, I've got frost all on my face. And my trapper hat actually isn't wind like that. It's actually stuck like that from the ice. <laughs> um, the limitations of the old kit are really, really small. Modern kit, you can whack on a big duffel down, and you can go from minus 30 all the way to plus 20, no worries. Every time we stopped to have a break for an hour and a half, I would have to keep standing up, putting the blood to my fingers by shuffling away, um, and we had to basically get going every minute, two minutes, which was a bit frustrating for the boys. I was also eating Shackleton's food, cured meat, fat, lard, sorry, and oats, and that's all I had, and it was absolutely amazing. Um, it sounds a bit weird when... All, when <laughs> It sounds a bit weird when all the guys are eating Yorkie bars and the modern expedition food, but we had a medical warning from all the science that Hugo's um, sh blood sugar level from all the modern expedition food got down to hypoglycemic coma level twice, whereas I was far more sustained. It was absolutely amazing to see this and to learn um, more about the food. Um, unfortunately, Hugo's knee um, decided to play up and we had to actually get helicoptered um, off the ice cap after two weeks at Die Radar Station. Um, but the continue, um, we continued on after that, um, and the journey started when Hugo will introduce the next slide. <laughs> I didn't throw it. Um, so obviously having failed, we thought, yeah, let's go for it again, because obviously that's a sensible option. Um, we got involved with GSK and their human forms lab, so they were monitoring um, from a really detailed standpoint how the kit was um, different, oh, affecting our bodies. So, uh, this time, we were gonna I was going to climb in George Mallory's kit, and Ross was going to climb in the modern. Um, a few probing and probing, probing things, a bit uncomfortable, but um, amazing to see the performance of the new and old kit in a chamber. Um, so this was at Mount Elbrus. The higher peak on the right-hand side uh, was our objective. That's 13 miles away. Um, Kenton will probably know that very well. Um, and this was the old kit. This was what George Mallory wore. Um, you've obviously got your putties, you've got your uh, hobnail boots. Those Tricuni nails are exactly the same as what Mallory used. So um, all really, really traditional materials. Um, and this is all, in, I didn't have a clue how it was going to fare up. Um, we obviously just slightly adapted our kit from, from the Greenland expedition. But, you know, I think I look quite fetching on the right, really. Uh, again, you know, going into these environments, it really puts your mind in a different... Uh, I suppose, area than the modern because you actually don't know how well you're going to fare up. You know, with the, with the modern kit, you think, oh, it'll be all right, we're just going to go in there, look cool, take a few pictures. But 
you really, really had to fight. And even trying to learn how to put your putties on in the morning, <laughs> you know, never, never leave things at the last moment, but that's one thing we did leave, um, is actually trying to wound all the material up your leg, uh, which is harder than it looks because you've got to put a nice little fold in your leg. Um, but, you know, uh, getting used to the kit, you know, very, very clearly see that you know, you've got the modern plastic boots on the right and just literally a double pe um, a pair of leather boots on the right, or so on the left. Um, that's all I went up in. So you've obviously got a glacier. I didn't have any crampons. Well, I did, but I couldn't figure out how to use them. So this, <laughs> so this is us with our guide, uh, Russian guide Gregory, who actually sang opera to us, which was slightly weird, but uh, Russia, Russia's a really weird place. But we just couldn't figure out how to work and make these crampons, which were, you know, 100 years old, stick to these boots, and Crockett and Jones had taken the crampons with the boots and made them and married them, and then you get there and they don't work. Um, but that's kind of expeditions for you. You've kind of got to, you know, figure it all out while you're there. Um, so this is at 5,200 metres. Um, I got to this height without any change in my kit. And due to the team being slightly slower than I would like, um, meant that I wasn't moving and therefore keeping us warm. So just below that rock, I had to change, change my, um, my shoes to the plastic. Oh, obviously, we always go in or take a new pair because, you know, there's, you know, as Ross said, there's really not much give in the old. Um, but ironically, the old kit was perfect because you can just, the gloves, which were mitts, but had a finger, one fingerless mitt, as it were, was perfect for the modern iPhone. So who'd have thought, <laughs> who'd have thought, hey? Um, getting to the summit um, after failure was absolutely amazing. This is 186 years to the day of the first summit of Elbrus, um, which made it extra special. And success was very, very sweet. And I suppose failure, um, you know, made us succeed on that one. Um, it was really, really hard. Yes! <clears throat> Thank you.